Hey y'all, it's Sam again. So you're probably looking at this whole mess here and uh, realizing it's a lot of machines to cover. You are right. But don't worry, I ain't covering all of them in a single episode. These may look like they're for one specific purpose, but no, really they're for multiple purposes. Each module's producing its own resources. One of them I'll be covering ad time for every episode. So with that being said, in this episode here, I will be covering specific polyethylene production. So, as we all know that, uh, at least those of us who've uh, advanced well enough in MV, it's going to be reliant on polyethylene to be able to, one, make the uh, molten polyethylene to create uh, machine holes more cheaply, and two, it uh, gives us the ability to make certain plastic circuit boards for uh, more circuits in the future. So, I'll be starting that off here with uh, basically what I'm looking at here. So this whole system for making polyethylene is looking into the uh, ethanol. Now ethanol you can get just by uh, distilling a bunch of biomass which you can get from trees or other plants through the uh, fermenter. Processing all that fermented biomass into the uh, ethanol which I can then just uh, into the basic dehydrators. Let me turn down the weather here. That explosion is from thunder. No machines are uh, being blown up in the making of this video. <laughs> so, ethanol gets converted into a liter's worth of um, ethylene. Let me look up the recipe of that real quick. Yeah, so one cell worth of ethylene, which is which is a liter's worth, and then a liter's worth of water as a secondary byproduct. So those two together runs through the whole system. Now I got four of these dehydrators. It takes 120 seconds at MV power to uh, produce one liter of each fluid. But with four of these, I might also say one every 30 seconds in terms of time ratio per liter of both fluids. So I'll be having those be uh, going through the um, quadruple bronze fluid pipes. These are nice because it allows you to store multiple tubes worth of fluids into one two block, so I can transfer two fluids simultaneously at once through the four uh, duple fluid pipes. So I have the ethylene cells being output into the GT tanks, cycling through. Water going through the other side here as a direct fluid output, all just to run, all just to be running through the through the electrolyzers and the um, and the uh, chemical reactor. All the water is going into the electrolyzers just for sake of producing oxygen and hydrogen. It's producing the two together. Is enough to uh, is enough to provide a little bit of oxygen into the uh, chemical reactor. You need oxygen mixed with ethylene in order to make molten polyethylene. That's just thunder, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, pretty much an ingot's worth of ethylene and the uh, and a cells with oxygen is enough to get you uh, almost two ingots worth of molten polyethylene. Now you can mix this with compressed air cells and seven liters of oxygen gas. Me, I'm choosing to go seven liters of oxygen gas at a time just for the sake of uh, not having these machines running all the time. Help save on performance doing that. If I were to be doing this in mass, 
Well, I'm not doing the match, doing this match, so that's a negligible detail, but, but yeah, those two together, makes the uh, molten polyethylene, which I'm then depositing into this tank, mm. which will then be distributing the molten polyethylene elsewhere, whether it's through a uh, fluid solidifier to uh, make the glass plates for uh, circuit board making, or uh, being redistributed into a assembly machine to create machine holes at a discount cost. Molten polyethylene is um, more renewable than what uh, wrought iron is. So this is a way of, by, of getting better circuits and uh, bypass me need to use wrought iron. Now what's nice is that as long as I have a very steady supply of ethanol being provided, all this here is pretty much completely renewable. Now one small detail left to touch about. One, with these uh, quadruple bronze fluid pipes, I'm having, uh, I'm having uh, fil fluid filters. The fluid filters specify what fluids are going to each device, so that way there's no possibility of having any unwanted fluids being mixed and matched between these devices between the chemical reactor and the uh, electrolyzers. That's how I'm able to uh, better dis distinguish which fluids are going through and how I'm separating the fluids through the uh, fluid pipes. These machines should be smart enough to know what to uh, draw from, but I would rather not take a chance. Another thing too as well, these electrolyzers, the amount of oxygen they provide, is not enough to uh, fully sustain the uh, chemical reactor. If you remember in one of the tutorials, I've uh, made a uh, advanced compressor uh, centrifuge system that produces oxygen and nitrogen. And remember how I mentioned how pliable that is? Here's the wonders of having it be infinitely pliable without having the need of making a lot of drawers. Because if I were being put in drawers with this, this here would be twice as long. And nice thing back to as well is as it draws all the uh, oxygen nitrogen out, more and more of these machines will be turning on to the point where they'll always be having exactly enough machines as needed to keep that uh, chemical uh, reactor always going. Anyways, y'all. Uh, well, before I wrap, the, wrap this up, it's important to keep in mind how much power these machines consume to as well. I'm finding that with the uh, chemical reactors, or, or the, I mean the dehydrators, electrolyzers, and the uh, chemical reactors, I've been needing on average one turbine each, for they almost consume almost a full amp's worth of energy power. And me, I'm just directly connecting them to the machine these machines to uh, avoid energy loss by the cables. The only way I'm, the only thing I'm not, not doing this though is using three gas turbines just to uh, power all the dehydrators. For each dehydrator is using 80 EUs per tick. That's about, let's see here, 80, 160, 320 EUs of power just from the four dehydrators. And with each MV turbine producing 120 EUs per tick, for 360 E is possible. Three amps of MV is enough to uh, power all these. At least the uh, dehydrators. A rule of thumb is I pay attention to what, what power demand for tick each recipe requires and what ratios to keep things going. This machine most of the time will be running all the all the time, the thanks to the compressors, electrolyzers, and the fact that these four dehydrators are almost enough to uh, keep the chemical reactor running all the time. So this is almost at optimal ratio. It's just that the times on these recipes 
slightly differ in ratio versus what the uh, chemical reactor demands. So it's going to be very difficult to achieve a perfect ratio with uh, the juice net, but even then, I won't be burning through molten polyethylene all the time, so it doesn't matter in the long run. So that's pretty much the uh, molten polyethylene setup, y'all. As uh, always, uh, I welcome questions, whether it's needing for uh, clarification or uh, something you don't know about or anything that's pretty much trending. As always, I'll try to answer them whenever I can, the best I can. And if I don't know something, well, I'll try to figure something out. I may respond to it as a direct comment or another video. Depends on uh, depends on circumstances with all of us. Anyways, y'all, I wish y'all a fantastic day, and y'all take care. Bye, bye.